half a world away in the fragmented forest of Asia, another great event has taken place. A calf has been born. She'll remain with her family for the rest of her life, never more than a rumble away. Moving to an ancient rhythm, they'll travel the forest together. For a creature so powerful, theirs is a peaceful domain. Family ties run so deep, they last a lifetime. Only one encounter could shatter their gentle world and break these bonds forever. For thousands of years, the Asian elephant has been coveted, rounded up, and driven into a man-made world. Some would never leave their homeland, but would be indentured for the rest of their lives. Others faced a different destiny. were pulled from their families and transported to another realm. It was 1796 when the first elephant arrived in the New World. Soon hundreds poured across the ocean. They would live out their long lives as many as 60 years in this strange new land. With tolerance and resignation, they conformed to a world that was not their own. If one fell ill or died, we simply brought another from its homeland. In the dark shadows of the past, the ghosts of these refugees still linger. Their legacy lives on. Scattered throughout the world are thousands of elephants, all dependent on our care and understanding. Each individual has a story to tell, with a past, a present, and hopefully, a future. Southern Asia lived some of captivity's most recent arrivals, but they were never intended for the captive world. They are refugees from the wild. They've landed here because their homeland is under siege. An ever-expanding human population is felling their forest for timber and crops. Elephants foraging on land once theirs collide, often fatally, with humans. The elephant's habitat has become a battleground. In Sri Lanka, those that survive this collision often land here, at the Pinawala Orphanage. A 56-year-old tusker named Raja is one of them. Raja lived his first 50 years in the wild. Six years ago, he was shot and blinded in both eyes when caught raiding crops. Crops planted on land that was once his home. Like Raja, most residents of the orphanage bear the scars of their collision with humankind. No matter the details of their past, they now share one thing in common. They'll never return to the wild. But here at Pinawella, the orphans do live in a herd. An extended family, 61 elephants strong. Alone at his outpost, the blind tusker listens to the herd greet each other beyond. 
After 14 hours on chains, they're anxious to socialize. For elephants, this kind of close contact is perhaps the most important thing in life. In the wild, males live mostly alone, joining the females only to mate. Here at the orphanage, they're put to work. They dispense 23,000 pounds of food each day. Laja has no contact with the others. After he was attacked one night by a male who got loose from his chain, he's been terrified of other elephants since. Each morning, the keepers, called Mahouts, lead the herd down to the river. Until recently, many of these orphans might have been exported to the Western world. Today, with Asian elephants on the endangered species list, they're rarely taken from their homeland. The spectacle draws thousands of tourists from around the globe. With no perimeter fences, the Mahouts keep the elephants tightly herded. In the wild, elephant families are led by a matriarch. Here at the orphanage, the matriarch is chained to the bank, so the others will stay close by. It's not a perfect world they live in, but the herd has begun to make a modest contribution to their endangered species. Wawenika is the 16th calf born here. At three months old, he's looked after by every member of the herd. While the orphanage represents hope for the future, it's also a sad reminder that elephants are no longer safe in the wild. Each day, the blind tusker is led to the river. Slowly finding his way, his trunk feels the ground before him helping him navigate the muddy path. It was only six years ago that Roger first felt the cold sensation of a chain around his leg. Today, he's completely dependent on the care of his mahout. This magnificent tusker will never again see the world he once knew, but he's safe now in this refuge. He stares with sightless eyes at the herd beyond. They're a new generation of captive elephants. With their newfound family, they'll remain in their homeland, unlike so many of their relatives who've been scattered across the world. There are more than 300 Asian elephants living in North America. 52-year-old Shirley is one of them. Her keeper, Solomon James, tries to meet her needs in this man-made world, but he knows he'll never be a substitute for one vital thing, the company of other elephants. As long as she'd been here, she hadn't been with any other elephant. So that had been over 20-some years. So, uh been a long time. Yeah, a long, long time. For 22 years, a plot of grass and a concrete stall is all she's known. Solomon James has cared for her as long as she's lived at the Louisiana Purchase Zoo. Shirley, come on. Come on, Shirley. Come on. There you go, Shirley. Hold up there. There you go. Like so many elephants her age, Shirley's past is a checkered one. She arrived as a youngster from Asia nearly 50 years ago and was immediately drafted into the circus. Photographs from the 50s give a sense of her early days on the road. 
when a circus boat she was on sank in Nova Scotia, Shirley was rescued. But a later accident would change her life forever. When she was 30 years old, Shirley was attacked by another elephant. Her leg would never be the same. She was retired from the circus, out of a job and out of a home. Oh, sure. I that feels so good, sure. I know. This zoo in Louisiana stepped forward and offered to take Shirley in. It was a charitable act, but it was a small zoo, with room for only one elephant. Twenty years ago, the need for companionship wasn't well understood. And so, Shirley hasn't seen another of her kind in over two decades. Solomon does what he can, but he knows it's not enough. I come by, I'll give her a little hay, maybe I'll give her some branches or something to play with, and I'll just stay in the yard with her a little bit, and that give her some company. So it like make us think that she's not alone. You know, that at least I'm here to be with her. <laughs> Shirley is one of the last elephants living alone in North America. But her story won't end here. Deeper understanding is bringing hope to elephants like Shirley. Here in Washington, D.C., a small herd of females lives at the National Zoo. Though they're not related as they would be in the wild, at least they're living with others of their kind. Shanti is the youngest. Like so many urban elephants, she's a refugee from Asia. She arrived nearly 25 years ago, an orphan with her mahout. Only a year old, she was a bicentennial gift from Sri Lanka. She was welcomed to the National Zoo by President Carter's daughter, Amy. Today, Shanti lives in a herd of four, three Asian elephants and one African named Nancy. For 12 years, Nancy lived alone until the zoo decided she should join the others. Despite the fact she's a different species, Nancy's become the matriarch of the herd. Lead keeper Marie Galloway is determined that none of these elephants will ever live alone again. It's totally unacceptable to have a single female elephant. If we're going to have elephants under human care, they have to have their needs met, and one of their needs is to be social. Many years ago, when we first brought elephants to this country, in some places they're lies were absolutely intolerable. We have learned so much about how to care for elephants. What? Steady, good girl. Steady. My job is to strive to constantly improve Steady. the quality of their life, physically, emotionally, to improve every aspect of their care while living here with us. And Bika, no, no, here. But just as conditions are getting better for the urban elephant, we've come face to face with a serious dilemma. With few elephants being imported, the population in captivity has become endangered, just as it is in the wild. If their birth rate doesn't improve, in as little as 50 years, the captive population of Asian elephants will become virtually extinct. Six years ago, Shanti made history when she gave birth to her first calf, Kamari. She was the first elephant born in the National Zoo's 100-year history. Little Kamari was an important addition to the urban elephant population and a precious one to the National Zoo. Having a baby elephant is just the most incredibly awesome thing. Kamari was just a pure bundle of joy. She was nothing but pure joy. Kamari would come running through and Shanti would just tolerate it. She'd tolerate her stepping on her face when she's laying down being bathed. Big old foot right down on top of her eye. But at 16 months, Kamari began to show signs of illness and nothing could be diagnosed. On a warm spring morning, she took a sudden downward turn. Uh, at odd times, 
Yeah. You know, um, we had spent the night with Kamari the night before, and we were trying to get her to eat, which she had not stopped taking food. And a little bit before lunchtime, we noticed her tongue had turned this sort of purplish blue color and of course we were very concerned but still we didn't really know what to treat her for we went ahead and took her outside to be with the other elephants which we were trying to just keep her stimulated and keep her interested in moving around and we were out there and Kamari laid down on the ground and Shanti walked away and I looked up and I looked over her and I said there is only one reason why Shanti would walk away and it's too late and she died right there Other calves had mysteriously fallen ill as well. Over time, nine deaths were reported in North America alone. Using tissue from Kamari, researchers made a breakthrough discovery. The virus that killed Kamari was a form of herpes found in healthy African elephants. It was proving deadly to Asian calves. The zoo feared it had been transmitted by Nancy but the resident African tested negative. In the end, the origin remains a mystery, but a cure has been found, thanks to Kamari. We know what virus killed Kamari now. We have saved two other babies, which gives some purpose to her death. She lives on in so many people's memories and all the many people that came to visit, people that did nothing but watch her from a distance felt such a connection. There are children that learned about life and death through watching her. And every elephant baby that is saved because of Kamari is a memorial to Kamari. A little male who stood on wobbly legs to face his future is now three weeks old and growing strong. His keepers have named him George. Under the watchful eye of his mother, George is growing up in a barn full of cousins. The herd numbers 12, with many of the elephants related, it's perhaps the closest thing to a wild herd in all of North America. George is the seventh calf born here at the African Lion Safari, a tourist park near Toronto, Canada. If he's healthy and well cared for, he may live as many as 60 years. It's a tremendous responsibility bringing an elephant into the world, especially a male elephant. Rex lives at the far end of the barn. He's one of only 27 mature males in North America. Because of his extraordinary strength, there's always a steel barrier between Rex and his keepers. In the past decade, nine people working with elephants have lost their lives. Like most bulls today, Rex is only handled when he's safely in a squeeze cage. Each year, Rex goes into a period called must. Heightened testosterone levels make mature males especially aggressive at this time. It can last up to three months. Little George has at least 12 years before his first must. Rex In days gone by, it wasn't unheard of to destroy a problem bull. Today, keepers like Charlie Gray are looking for ways to handle them more humanely. Many believe that barriers like this not only protect a handler, they can protect an elephant as well. While George's birth is cause for celebration, there's a catch-22 within the world of captive elephants. Few zoos have facilities for bulls like Rex, and few want the liability. Unless something changes, there won't be a home for males like George in years to come. For now, George can enjoy his family and his freedom.
The life of the herd is not without restrictions. For a few hours each day, they're allowed remarkable freedom. George is about to experience the world beyond the barn for the first time. Rex stays behind when the herd heads off to the hundred acres of woods beyond his pen. George's life clearly reflects that for at least some captive elephants, traditions are being tested and boundaries are being pushed. But the population is dwindling. If elephants in captivity are to survive, breeding is essential. Good boy, Calvin. George's father, Calvin, is only 13 years old and still docile enough for Charlie to handle without a barrier. Calvin's already sired five calves. The zoo community is hoping he'll sire another before long. How's it coming, Peter? <laughs> but Calvin will never meet his mate. His semen will be sent to another zoo for right, use in artificial okay, insemination. Right, take it off. Go this could be the way of the future. If his sperm count is high, Calvin will be part of a landmark procedure. It's a promising alternative for zoos without males. In Washington, D.C., the semen looks good. It's Calvin. An international team of experts has gathered at the National Zoo, and the focus is Shanti. This elephant who contributed so much through her infant Kamari, is getting another chance at motherhood. Eight dozens of attempts. So far, there have only been two successful elephant births through artificial insemination. For months, they've been following Shanti's hormone levels, waiting for the moment she's most fertile. There's a three-day window, and they've decided to go for it. For her last pregnancy, she was sent on an 18-month breeding loan. This time, she won't have the stress of leaving her home and the herd. Daddy. Marie has to keep Shanti relaxed. If she gets stressed, the procedure is less likely to succeed. The veterinarians have flown from eastern Germany. They're part of a small group of experts who've developed the cutting-edge technology. With the aid of fiber optics, Dr. Goetz navigates the birth canal, while Dr. Hildebrandt helps guide him. Okay, so you are ready? You are ready? Okay, two seconds. Three. If Shanti conceives, she'll make history once again. But as we clamor to bring babies into the world, we must continue the struggle to improve their lives. Three months later, the results are in. Shanti is pregnant. While some things are changing in the world of captive elephants, others have remained remarkably the same. Life on the road for the Carson and Barnes Circus begins well before sunrise. It's a tradition over 50 years old, and elephants have always been a key component. But today, the use of elephants in circuses has come under scrutiny. 
Critics argue that life on the road and in the ring is no life for an elephant. Of the 16 elephants traveling with Carson and Barnes, 13 were captured from the wild. Histories are murky, since early records have been lost for many of them. All that's known about Barbara, the matriarch of the herd, is that she arrived from Asia in 1949. In an early photograph, she appears to be about five years old and already performing. At 53, she's still working today. Life on the road can be dusty. Tim Frisco uses Vaseline to protect the skin around their eyes. In the circus's 63 years, some aspects of the elephant's care have evolved. Electric wire allows more freedom. It's replaced the leg chains that once tethered the herd for much of the day. Why we going? But there are other things that haven't changed. Come on, move up. Barbara is part of the circus workforce, a vital member of the team. Go on. Without her, the largest big on, top in the world wouldn't go up. Barbara, go on. The five ring tent is the last of its kind in North America. Move up. Barbara, go on. Come here. Hi. Right, come over here. When they're not in their winter quarters, the elephants spend eight months a year on the road in over 200 locations. Each new locale means the tent goes up again. Barbara, go on. Barbara understands more than 35 commands. Come here. Now go on. Right there. Back up. Move up. Move up. Barbara, go on. Come here, move up. Hi. Come here, move up. Barbara, go on. Barbara, go on. Barbara's getting on in years. How much longer will she be able to do this kind of work? She and the others won't be around forever. Circuses are facing a population crisis, just like zoos. With few elephants coming from Asia, they've become serious about breeding. Carson and Barnes experienced the first birth in its 63-year history with the arrival of Jenny. Only a year old, she's already on the road with her mother. While Jenny represents the future for Carson and Barnes, elephants from the wild, like Barbara, now represent the past. No one knows for sure, but it's safe to guess that Barbara's performed in over 20,000 shows in her time. Since being taken from the wild, circus life is all she's known. She loves attention. She just, probably the sweetest old thing around, actually. But anywhere but in the circus, she wouldn't be happy. She's been in it all her life, and she loves it. It's like... We did, actually, two years ago, try to take her out of putting up the tent and all that. She slowed down eating and looked like she got depressed, actually. So we put her back in there, her appetite picked right back up, and she'll be here forever. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Welcome to America's largest wild animal circus. The elephants do two shows a day. Whether for a crowd of thousands or only 30, the show goes on. It's a tradition. Try. Good girl. Steady. Salute. The next Salute generation is already in training. Grab her tail. When she comes back, you pull her back a little bit. Good. Sit down. Sit down. No, no, move up. Get her foot off her. 
Move up. Good. Nope. Nope. Sit down. Quit that clowning. Steady. Good. All right. Sit. Sit. Feet. Get them up. Feet. Sit. Sit up. Sit. Feet. Sit. 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 All right. Steady. Good girl. When the second show is over, when the lights fade and the crowd leaves the big top, the last business of the day begins. They'll be on the road at dawn tomorrow. And once again, the tent will go up. The debate over circuses continues to smolder. But deep-rooted traditions don't easily change. In Asia, work for elephants is nothing new. It's a tradition thousands of years old. But today, it's coming unraveled. In many countries, there's little forest left to be logged, and working elephants are becoming obsolete. Thailand's 1989 ban on logging has plunged many mahouts and their elephants into the ranks of the unemployed. Here in Bangkok, one of the world's densest cities, there are elephants tucked away on empty lots, scraping out a living on the streets. Though they're still in their homeland, they might as well be a million miles away. It's here, in a makeshift camp, that a 45-year-old female named Pang Tao lives with her owners. At their home in northeast Thailand, there's no means of income and not enough forest to graze. Out of desperation, her owners have brought her to Bangkok. Peng Tao's story is not unique. The problem in Bangkok has become so grave, the veterinarian from the local zoo pays volunteer visits to needy elephants on his days off. Pang Tao's eyes show the early signs of a cataract, and she still bears the scars of logging. She has wounds on her belly from ropes and scars on her head from beatings with an axe. But those days are over. Her new owners are kind. Dr. Alan Kong knows his measures are only temporary. He'll do what he can while she's here in Bangkok. Peng Tao receives her treatment with extraordinary patience. She'll soon be late for work. The doctor's visit has set Peng Tao behind. The other elephants are beginning to mobilize. Safety is always an issue for elephants on the street, especially at night. No one knows for sure how many elephants like Pang Tao are living in Bangkok. Like the others, they load her up, move her out, and work begins for this lady of the night. estimated 
estimated that fewer than 1,500 elephants remain in the wild in Thailand. More than twice that many live in captivity. Like Pang Tao, more and more are landing on the city streets. Each evening, Pang Tao drinks from the fountain in front of a nightclub. The government has banned elephants from Bangkok, but the law is hard to enforce. Thailand is looking for alternatives for working elephants. Until one is found, her owners insist this is the best life for Pang Tao. They sell bananas for tourists to feed her. This way Pang Tao gets to eat, and there's enough money left over to feed themselves. They have to keep moving. The night's still young. Pangtao is an elephant caught between two worlds. Until a solution is found, no one knows where her journey will lead her. Back in the U.S., change is on the horizon for at least some elephants. A little piece of heaven has been carved out of the rolling hills of Tennessee, a sanctuary. It was created by Carol Buckley, but the inspiration came from an elephant she met when she was a college student 25 years ago. I'm sitting there at my kitchen table doing homework, and my dog barks, and I get up and look, and here's a little elephant, tiny little elephant, with a rope around her neck, and this man's just leading her down the road, taking her for a walk. That's how I met her. It, it was amazing. The man was very friendly and said, if you'd like to feed her, you know, come to my tire store and you can feed her a bottle. And that's how it started. Carol was hooked. She took out a loan and bought little Tara from the local tire merchant. Their obvious means of employment was showbiz. They began with amusement parks and worked their way up to circuses. Presenting Tara, the educated elephant. Trained by the lovely Carol Buckley. But their years on the road began to wear thin. Carol began to dream of a place where elephants wouldn't have to perform. Where they could roam in wide open spaces. A place where they'd have the company of other elephants and could come and go when they pleased. Today, Tara lives on 120 acres of rolling farmland, a haven created five years ago for old, sick, or needy elephants. So far, her companions are two other females, both with a history in showbiz. After 23 years in the circus, Jenny was injured by a bull elephant. Her leg never healed. Barbara arrived 2,000 pounds underweight. She's gained a thousand since coming to the sanctuary. After years of working with elephants, Carol felt it was time to give back to the animals who've given so much to humans. I thought, well, I know exactly what it is that I want to do for elephants, and I don't see anybody else doing it yet. Let's do that. We have the power to change things for them. We have the power to give them just a little bit of what they need, and we all should be doing that. The barn door is always open. The elephants can come and go at will. Here, they know they'll find food, shelter, and the care of their keepers, Carol and her co-founder, Scott Blaze. Though Tara's life has been transformed, she hasn't yet shed some of her old habits.
Carol and Scott are working to raise enough money to care for these elephants for the rest of their lives. It's only a start, but in the struggle for understanding, the urban elephant is gaining ground. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything. I'll be with you 100% of the way, Shirley. Back in Louisiana. Okay, Wayne. After 22 years without other elephants. Bring it in. Shirley's life is about to change. The Louisiana Purchase Zoo has decided they can no longer give Shirley the best life. They're going to let her go. Sure. It's not going to be easy for Shirley well, no, or for Solomon. You didn't do your command, Shirley. You didn't do it. You didn't give me the answers that I want, Shirley. If you give me the answers I want, I'll give you a carrot. Come on. Come on, look at here, Shirley. Come on, move up, Shirley. Come on, move up, Shirley. Come on, move up, Shirley. You gave me an inch, okay. But you're bagging off, though, Shirley, and that's not good. Come on, move up, Shirley. Come on, give me a few. Come on, move up. That's right. Give a bow if you have to. There you go. Come How on. How many trucks has she been on. loaded onto in the Come past? On, move up. In her 30 years with the circus, how many miles did she travel? Okay, I'm ready. Shirley's so reluctant to get near the truck, they've resorted to using a winch. Give me just a little more, Shirley. Come on. Give me just a little, give me just a little bit, Shirley. Come on. That's it. Give me just a little bit. Just a little bit. Come on. Come on. Just a Look here. There you go. Come on. Come on. There you go, Shirley. Look at it. Okay, let me cool it down. Oh, yeah. That feels good, Shirley. <laughs> yeah, man, that feels real good, Shirley. Not like a good cool shower, Shirley. Look at that. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Come here with you. Don't call her. Just let her walk on home. I'm going to give her a treat. With Shirley finally in the truck, they've got to get moving. It's a long haul to Tennessee. They'll drive through the cool of the night. Fourteen hours later, and two states away, Shirley arrives at the sanctuary. for Shirley's big moment. Tara is the first to return to the barn. She'll be the first elephant Shirley has laid eyes on in over two decades. No one can predict how she'll react. for him to do something he's been dreading. This will be the last time he bathes his old friend. See, she's gonna love it. I really do. Nice place. I'm gonna miss her. Yeah. 
saw this spray. I told her that there'd be no more change. She's free now. I just thought about, I don't know who was the first to put a chain on, but I'm glad to know that I was the last to take it off. She's free at last. We miss each other. My big girl. At nightfall, the last elephant, Jenny, returns to the barn. Trumpets and rumbles echo into the morning. Carol and Scott have never seen a reaction like this. In their desperation to get closer throughout the night, Shirley and Jenny have bent the steel bars between them. Scott finally manages to pry open the gate so Shirley can get through, and the reunion is complete. They say an elephant never forgets. Almost 25 years ago, the two were together in a circus Jenny had just been brought from Asia, only an infant. Perhaps Shirley was her comfort and mother in that strange new land. These two old friends are the closest thing to family they will ever know. They are comrades, survivors in a captive world. Jenny by her side, Shirley stands to face her future. Home at last, they'll live out their days together. But here at Pinawella, the orphans do live in a herd. An extended family, 61 elephants strong. 
Alone at his outpost, the blind tusker listens to the herd greet each other beyond. After 14 hours on chains, they're anxious to socialize. For elephants, this kind of close contact is perhaps the most important thing in life. In the wild, males live mostly alone, joining the females only to mate. Here at the orphanage, they're put to work. They dispense 23,000 pounds of food each day. Flaja has no contact with the others. After he was... Half a world away, in the fragmented forest of Asia, another great event has taken place. A calf has been born. She'll remain with her family for the rest of her life, never more than a rumble away. Moving to an ancient rhythm, they'll travel the forest together. For a creature so powerful, theirs is a peaceful domain. Family ties run so deep, they last a lifetime. Only one encounter could shatter their gentle world and break these bonds forever. For thousands of years, the Asian elephant has been coveted, rounded up, and driven into a man-made world. Some would never leave their homeland, but would be indentured for the rest of their lives. Others faced a different destiny. were pulled from their families and transported to another realm. It was 1796 when the first elephant arrived in the New World. Soon hundreds poured across the ocean. They would live out their long lives as many as 60 years in this strange new land. With tolerance and resignation, they conformed to a world that was not their own. If one fell ill or died, we simply brought another from its homeland. In the dark shadows of the past, the ghosts of these refugees still linger. Their legacy lives on. Scattered throughout the world are thousands of elephants, all dependent on our care and understanding. Each individual has a story to tell, with a past, a present, and hopefully, a future. Southern Asia lived some of captivity's most recent arrivals. But they were never intended for the captive world. They are refugees from the wild. They've landed here because their homeland is under siege. An ever-expanding human population is felling their forest for timber and crops. Elephants foraging on land once theirs collide, often fatally, with humans. The elephant's habitat has become a battleground. In Sri Lanka, those that survive this collision often land here, 
at the Pinoella Orphanage. A 56-year-old Tusker named Raja is one of them. Raja lived his first 50 years in the wild. Six years ago, he was shot and blinded in both eyes when caught raiding crops. Crops planted on land that was once his home. Like Raja, most residents of the orphanage bear the scars of their collision with humankind. No matter the details of their past, they now share one thing in common. They'll never re-